What do housing, parks, roads, wildlife, water, jobs, and shopping all have in common? They are all individual features of our natural and man-made landscapes. Understanding the nature of these places and their connections are important to residents, policymakers, businesses, and agencies. Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, combines technology, data, and people to help answer these questions related to our natural and man-made world. Today GIS is being implemented in hundreds of thousands of organizations and it's helping them make better decisions and run operations and make organizations better actually. But at the same time it's becoming a new language, a kind of new medium. Maps are becoming pervasive across organizations, explaining how things are in the organization, uh, giving insight, understanding relationships, patterns, processes, help, helping us understand the future. Shasta College has a Geographic Information Systems program that is considered a career technical information program. The college's program requires students to work on a GIS project. My name is Emily Sachs and this is my first semester taking GIS courses at Shasta College and I chose to map Reading Art in Public Places. I've chosen mostly outdoor things so that people could potentially go on this tour and not have to worry about businesses being open and they can just kind of do it when they feel like it. This is the online version of my map. It's in ArcGIS Explorer online and I've imported the layers that I made for ArcMap into ArcGIS Explorer online and anyone can view it. So if you were looking at the legend and you knew that you wanted to go see something in Turtle Bay, you would just go to the green dots for Turtle Bay and when you hover over it, their um, item number, their title and the artist pop up and then you can just click on the one that you want to get more additional information. But I definitely think that it's a really valuable tool and it makes me happy to see that we're using it more often to make better decisions. It's really dynamic and it's like endless possibilities from mapping the London Olympics to the Panama Canal, the widening of the Panama Canal. Um, I think what is special about GIS is that it is so useful in so many different applications, so many different fields. Um, it seems to be most commonly used in the natural resources areas, in the forestry, things like that. Um, so we were given the project of mapping the trees here on campus and we had some of our clients were the physical plant, which is the maintenance crew on campus. Um, we also had the master gardeners were very interested in using the project for tree identification purposes. The plant ID class itself, same thing, plant identification purposes. Originally the project started with an ortho image and the points were digitized manually. In, wherever there was a tree canopy, a point was, was set. So that was the original tree map back a few years ago. When we took over the project, what we did was we went and took the study area and went out and actively ID'd them using a handheld GPS and walked each tree, which gave us the precise location. But I know most of, at least my focus on the project, what I thought was our main goal as far as usefulness was for physical plant. They often have trouble with the oaks, especially in the grassy areas of campus because they get too much water and a lot of them will actually um, rot out in the center and you don't necessarily realize it until all of a sudden branches are falling off and causing major damage. Trying to symbolize all these different species of trees was impossible in one layer. So I divided them up into six different layers where in the GIS, you can look at just the native trees, 
or you can look at just the ornamental trees, or you can look at the native deciduous independently of all the other points. Courses are designed to train students in the three basic elements of GIS. So there are three essential functions that GIS serves. One is data collection and management, a second is analysis, and a third is display. And so data collection and management involves gathering data from existing sources, collecting new data through GPS and other methods, and also the maintenance of the data and accessing the data through geographic databases. A second area is the analysis side. And through analysis, we are able to combine geographic data and we're able to extract information from uh, our geographic data to answer what if scenarios. So we can look at things like what would be the impacts or the benefits if we were to build a new road or if we were going to add a park or we were going to build some industrial facility. And it can also be more simple than that as well. It can be things as simple as somebody that wants to pull up their parcel of land and find out what sort of adjacent land ownership or land uses there are in relation to where their property is. The third is display and display at its basic level is usually maps. We all have seen maps. They've been around for thousands of years, but nowadays we have uh, tremendous uh, range of tools to be able to do the graphical side of, of producing maps. But we also have the ability now with computers and mobile devices to be able to have uh, interactive maps that have changeable scale to them. The content of the scale changes as one moves in. We have the ability with mobile devices and GPS to be able to place ourselves on the maps. 